Hello and welcome to the 43rd video in this series, Programming HS Engine in JavaScript. So in this video, we're going to start working now on the evaluation function. So this goes here inside, for example, this placeholder here in alpha beta, and this is where we return the score from the side to moves point of view. So I've added a new file called evaluate.js, and I've also put it inside the script section here to add in add the script in inside the index.html and let's have a look how we're going to write our evaluation function it's not all going to be done as you can imagine inside one video but for now we're going to write a very basic evaluation function so I'm going to call the function eval position so evaluating our position and what we're going to be returning from this position is a score and we'll set this score at the start of the function to take the material score for the position. And the way we'll do that is we'll take the material value for white and subtract from that the material value for black. So let's say that black was a pawn up, then the score would be set at the start of the function to minus 100. And if white was a pawn up, the score would now be plus 100. And what happens then is we go to all the way through our evaluation rather than having to maintain a white score and a black score and then returning the difference between the two we we'll just have one score where black when he gets scores bonuses for different features in the position gets them get uh, that's subtracted from score and all whites bonuses are added to score so that means then that we can say at the end of the function if gameboard dot side is equal to colors white then we just return score Otherwise, we return minus score. Like so. So that way, we're always returning the score from the point of view of the side to move. So now we've written that in. The question is, is how are we going to evaluate the position? We have our basic material evaluation, and that's already enough to make the engine play, well, not well, but certainly try and hang on to its material and make the opponent if possible. But you can actually make the engine play surprisingly well by adding in just what are called piece tables and the piece tables look like so and I'd recommend you just download the code here I'm going to put one in for now and then I'll put the rest in in a bit but the first one here is called a pawn table and the top here it's 64 squares one representing each square on the board which by the way is why we had this 64 square 64 and 120 interchange functions written here it's because I didn't want to type out 120 squares here it's far easier to do it with just 64 and you can see the way the pawns are aligned out this square here represents square A1 and this square here represents square H1 so this is the first rank the second rank and so on and all scores are as with the material in terms of a hundredth of a pawn so one pawn is worth 100 so we're saying that the pawns get minus 0.1 when they're on their start squares on d2 and e2 and get plus 0.2 when they go to d4 and e4 to encourage the program to actually prey its pawns in the middle into the center of the board and you see that there's actually a bit of discouragement to play from h2 to h3 and also g2 to g3 but once the pawns actually have got further up the board, then we assume that the game is probably towards maybe the end game or something. So we encourage generally the pawns to be pushed forward uh, a rank with a bias on the center. And this actually already bizarrely makes the engine play not good chess, but good reasonable looking chess, certainly in the opening. But the problem is, before we start writing any code inside evaluate position to actually use this, we need to do something else first. We can loop through each pawn on the, bo on, the bo on the board and find the square in terms of its 120 square, get the 64 square index and locate our score. Of course, though, for black, we need a mirrored version of this table because obviously black doesn't have his pawn sitting on the second rank at the start, they're on the seventh rank. And if we use this pawn table as it is for black, then he'd try and keep all his pawns up on the seventh rank here and think that the position's fantastic. 
Well, instead of making a second table with the scores all reversed, because I find that a real pain, we're going to inside defs.js, add something in here so that we can actually get the mirror of the 64 square. So say our 64 square is A1, then the mirror would give us the index for A8, and so on. So I'm just going to drop this in here, and I recommend really that probably just download the code and copy this in because it's a pain to have to type out. But the array is going to so array is going to be called mirror64, and I'm going to put that in. I'm going to put that in just below the rand32 and paste it in here, and it looks like so. So the way you can see is you remember that normally the indexing goes naught up to from here up to 63, where A8 would be a 56 here. Well, now if we supply a 56, then we get back the square from the mirror index of naught. So we can mirror the values in these piece tables here effectively. And all we need now, of course, then is a little function to actually be able to mirror these squares correctly. So what we're going to do is, and I'm going to put that function just below the piece index function here, We'll say function and we'll call it mirror64 and then it takes obviously in a square and it's simply going to return then our mirror64 array, I think it was called mirror64, yeah, like that, at the index of square. Of course it has to be a 64 base square. Okay, so that's that then set up and that's the evaluation function sort of declared and the score being returned now for colors white uh, sorry for depending which sides to move only taking into account the material at the moment and the last thing I want to do then is take this eval position here and just drop this now into our placeholder inside our alpha beta so we'll have return eval position like so and I've also got the placeholder here if we've reached our maximum depth that we want to go to to return the evaluation of the position here. Okay, so that's all we need to do for the evaluation then. And in the next video, what we'll do is we'll add in the rest of these tables and actually loop through the pieces and add in the values for the tables. So thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.